Okay, this is a basic tutorial that's going to show you how to work with green screening in Final Cut. And there's a couple things I've got taken care of off the bat. I've got some video footage of myself doing something interesting, I think, uh, in front of the green screen, something that involves action, right? Uh, which is this little clip here I got on my desktop. And it's a clip of me, and we just see it's me running in front of a big green sheet. I've got some lights on me and I've got some lights in the background trying to minimize shadows and stuff on the screen. And uh, okay, so it's kind of silly, right? And then I've also got a TIFF with a transparent background of a flying saucer that I'm gonna use to animate in there. And the transparent background was done through Photoshop uh, just like in that other tutorial for uh, the first kinetic text project for the transparency. Okay, so what I wanna do so I want to bring in my green screen footage into my timeline. And I want to bring in uh, my flying saucer. Bring that in there. And then um, I also want to get a uh, background image. And let's put this in. Uh, this is going to be real cheesy. The green screen is uh, fun for doing some kind of uh, kind of silly cheesy stuff. We'll have me running through uh, here. Actually, let's do... Uh, uh, Country side. Let's see what we got here. Okay, how about this one? This is a nice thing, reasonable size image. Grab the full size. It's not gonna work. Uh, I should have done this ahead of time. Apologies for that. Um, I want to find a nice zoomed out picture of the countryside. Uh, let's try that. And yeah, that looks like that's gonna work. Wikipedia. Thank you. Okay. Drag that to the desktop, got my background image, and then the best part about the green screen is that uh, you can put stuff behind, uh, and it's got a nice sharp edge. I can put the flying saucer in front of me all day with the transparency. It's like as if the you know, transparency was already there. You can see me behind that, and that's just fine. Um, but the green screen essentially lets us do the transparency trick with a video that we've shot in real life, okay? So I'm gonna just set this flying saucer off to the side for a bit. And I'm gonna take my background image, this countryside background, and I'm gonna put it into my timeline, and I wanna actually put it beneath, if you just like it a little bit, I'm gonna put this beneath myself here, okay? Now, if we go to that point, you can see, you can't really see much, but um, just the main video here. What I need to do is I need to apply the green screen effect. So if you go down here to this little, uh, glass panel over the film there, that's like the effects browser. This opens up here, and what I want to do is I want to scroll down to keying here. You got keying on the left, okay? And then you've got your keyer right here. And I simply want to take this, make sure I'll click on that, on the Brant video. Let's try to do the background one. Uh-oh, uh, beach ball. I want to take this and I want to drag it all the way out in the timeline right onto that clip there. And now you can see it looks like there's blackness all the way around me, but if I br drag my playhead back here, you can see that it's actually cleared up and it's showing me that countryside background behind there, right? Now that blackness is gonna be filled in if I expand that clip of that image there. Now you can see it's all countryside background. Okay, now we've got all this other stuff from the room here because that wasn't green. The green, green screen keyer only basically makes transparent what was green. So what I need to do is I need to crop this clip. So I gotta make sure that it's selected, highlighted yellow, and I can go right next to my transform tool to this crop tool. And with that, I can now drag the edges in here, right to the edge. If you drag it too far, it's gonna crop me, right? So you don't wanna go too far, just to where it gets rid of that little stream of darkness and then same thing on this side there's a desk and other parts of the room here i just want to drag all of that up so it's isolated me now i'm entirely in this nice idyllic background but i want to click on my background and i want to transform my background bigger so that it fills the entire screen and i'm stretching it out wide but i think it still looks pretty good okay there's a hair that needs to be cropped out there too i'm going to click back to brant running and I want to bring this down just, oops, that was transformed. I'm going to click on uh, crop again and crop in just a hair. 
Okay. Now, if again, you got to be careful not to crop too far. I might lose a little bit of that, and that might have been just how the, the footage was shot. Might not have been shot the best. Um, but now, if I set this back and push play, you can see I'm running, and my feet are coming off the screen. We'll set up the green screen for you guys uh, a little bit better than this, but this will be this will be okay. Okay, so I'm now I'm like running around like an idiot. <laughs> but uh, what we want to do now is I want to trim my clip to where I'm actually running. You can see I'm just standing here. So here, right where my arm starts to swing up, I'm going to take and zoom in on my uh, timeline. Command plus, right? And I want to go right to where that arm first swings up. And I want to push B for blade tool, or you can select the blade tool through here. And I want to just click there to cut it. Now I want to push back to A. A moves me back to the select tool, and I want to move to where I stop running and I look at the camera and laugh. I'm going to cut that part out. Right about there. Here, I'm starting to look at the camera. Okay. Okay, right there. Go to blade tool. Click there. And now A. A and B to switch back between those. Those are like the best two shortcuts for this program. Uh, now I can with A, click on that, delete that, go over here, and delete that. And we lost my flying saucer, oops, and we lost the, the bottom there too, because it was all tied here. Let me bring that over, see how it's got that little tab there? You gotta make sure that little tab actually connects to the proper video clip. Uh, we'll just bring my flying saucer back in a second. Okay, got that, go in here, bring back my saucer. Okay. Now, from this point on, you can see I got the saucer on top, I got me in the middle, and I've got this countryside in the background. What I want to do is I want to make it look like I'm actually running, and that's going to be done with the transform con uh, controls, transform tool. So I click on this clip, click on transform, and I'm going to make myself smaller to begin with. I'm going to hold down shift so I don't get squashed, and that's bringing me down, try to, oh actually, no, shift. That's the opposite in this program. <laughs> okay, don't hold down shift. Uh, normally in Photoshop, you'd hold down shift to constrain uh, proportions. Okay, now I'm small. It looks like I might even like kind of fit into the space a little bit better. If we play this, you can see, still got the video there. And uh, what I want to do is I want to make it look like I'm actually running. So uh, I need to go in and click here and go to, uh, oops, go to show video animation. And uh, I can transform. Actually, before I do that, let me, I'm sorry, I kind of skipped this part. Let me show you this real quick. Let me make myself big again. Click on me. There's one more thing I want to show you with the keyer that can be uh, really useful, okay? Click on here and let's get out of audio enhancements. Let's go back to here. Um, with the keyer, if you had a lot of shadows on your green screen, you might want to sample color. And with this, I click on here under the keyer, which will just be under video now. It's a new effect that's added. And I can click and drag my sample color. Oops, on it again. Uh, it's got to be red. Click and drag it out. Oh, come on. Turn transform off. There we go. Okay. I can drag out, and it's going to be like a color picker kind of, right? If I drag in this green screen area, you can see a, if I go a small area, it's going to try to. Uh, remove or make transparent anything that fits in this color range inside the box. The second I start fitting onto my shirt, tries to make that transparent. My skin tries to make that transparent. Okay, so if you had a lot of shadows, like there's some dark greens and some light greens in your video, you might want to select over the shadows, the lights and the darks in that. Uh, for me, I don't actually have to do that. Uh, the lighting was actually pretty good. Okay, so with that in mind, Got that all set up. I'm going to go back in. I'm going to transform myself down. I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit so I can see everything. And make it so I kind of fit in here. And I want it so that I'm going to uh, appear to be running through here. So I'm going to set my playhead to the beginning. Set this to fit. And just give me a little bit more space here. Okay, so from here, same thing, same way we animated the text and the images within that last project. I select this clip, I can open up my video animation tabs here, and I can see my keyframes appear for transformation. I can close the keyer, 
remove it, but just kind of get it out of the way. And then go to transform, click show. Okay, and now at this point, I can just add keyframes, just like I would with, uh, with the other projects. So I've got a keyframe at the beginning, and let's go out to the end. And uh, let me just move that out of the way for a second. Bring the flying saucer into the end. Okay, so um, now I've got my playhead towards the end of this clip, and I'm going to add another keyframe for position. And at that point, with my transform on, I can simply move my little character here. Okay, and you can see it's going to make it move from the right side to the left side of the screen. So let's go back, do that. And you can see it looks like he's sort of like running and moonwalking at the same time. That's because uh, the speed of that transformation is just not fast enough, okay? Um, so what I'm going to probably do is I'm going to actually take this keyframe and bring it towards the middle. It's going to make him go about twice as fast if I bring it in about halfway. And let's see how it looks. Now it doesn't look too bad. It looks silly, maybe a little too fast. So I can just keep shifting this back and forth a little bit. And I may not end up using all this clip. I might end up just dragging in that clip and making it a little bit shorter. Okay, and for our purposes, that's about good enough. It's a little funny. Again, like I said, this is generally, you know, you can do some really, really uh, high quality professional effects with this, but for the most part, um, it's really fun for kind of do a little cheesy kind of things. So I'm gonna close out that tab. And now I wanna bring in the flying saucer. And I'm gonna just transform this down so we don't fill up the whole page with it. And let's have it so the flying saucer chases me. So, okay. Bring the image of the flying saucer down here. Expand it to make it long enough to about this middle point where I'm probably gonna just end everything. I have it start at the beginning. Okay. And I want to just go with my transform control. And this is going to be exactly like we did with the uh, other project. Oops, there's a keyframe there already. So let's go to show video animation. Ah, I was adding keyframes as I was moving. So I can click on these extra unwanted keyframes and hit the delete key on the keyboard. Oops, I deleted the whole clip. Undo. Show video animation. Okay, there's two delete keys on the keyboard. <laughs> the uh, one right under function, don't use that one. Use the big delete key. Okay, so I've gotten rid of those, put my playhead there, shrink down my saucer, and we're going to have the saucer start like right here. And now let's uh, keyframe it out. So let's add a keyframe, position here, I'm going to hit play. And let's have the flying saucer add another keyframe here and have it kind of chase me up to this point. See how that looks so far. It's like a little ahead of me, right? So maybe I'm gonna just click this one and drag this back so it reaches that keyframe a little bit later. Come on, buddy. Computer says no. Okay. Um, oh, that's weird. Add another keyframe. Okay, here. Yeah, sometimes this thing gets a little keyframe happy. Okay, so I'm gonna move that there. And then uh, I've got that keyframe, and that's going to go there. See how that looks. Mm, you see, it kind of got ahead of me, and it kind of went back. And if we look closely here, there actually is these two keyframes here. I'm going to really make sure to get rid of that extra keyframe. Okay, so now it follows me up to there, and I can drag this keyframe out to make it slower. Okay, and now I'm looking up at this point. Right, so I might want to have this keyframe here. Maybe I'm going to come to where he's looking up and add another keyframe. And then the flying saucer is up here. So keep adding these extra keyframes. Okay, it's just getting a little bit keyframe greedy here. Okay, so let's watch this now. He's running from the flying saucer. It's right above him. We can go here and just manually add these without clicking over here and then let's have it chase them down okay let's see what we got okay 
and you can see what we've got is actually pretty completely ridiculous, but it's uh, it's fun, and it's actually pretty pretty reasonable example for what we're trying to do here. Um, now I want my video just to end at that point, so I'm going to take all these clips, drag them short, and of course you can go through and change the audio if it sounds weird with just the footsteps. Maybe you want to add some sound effects for that. Uh, flying saucer that you pull off of YouTube. There's also a good amount of sound effects right in within Final Cut here. If you click on this little musical note and check out Final Cut sound effects, you've got all kind of cool stuff. So, you know, if you want to add uh, different kung fu sounds or better footsteps, all kind of goofy stuff. Super jacket. Right? Pretty cool uh, sound effects. Okay. So uh, that's how to do the green screen basics uh, for this. Make sure you get your own green screen footage and you uh, do something that involves action. And it can be between 5 and 10 seconds long. If you want to go longer, that's just fine. But um, you can keep it very simple. Thanks for watching.